I'm the CEO of Spira Robotics. And at Spira, we've developed a image-guided handheld robot for difficult tracheal intubations. We've tested this device in cadavers with 100% success rate. We have a clear 510K pathway uh, with no clinical trials required for a first commercial device, and that's been confirmed by the FDA via pre-sub. This is a multi-billion dollar market opportunity. We have a high gross margin disposable, and highly favorable reimbursement and economics, and then we have excellent patent protection. We have an amazing team in place, and we've raised a $4.5 million series seed round and that's been uh, led by Good Growth Capital and uh, includes MQB partners, and that will fund us through our first in human uh, trial completion. We've also had a really favorable meeting with the FDA uh, that said that we don't need clinical data for our first submission. And so we've decided to extend our series seed round by an additional two million to add the FDA clearance milestone on top of the first in human uh, clinical trial. So first let me tell you a little bit more about intubation. So tracheal intubation, highly complex and high risk procedure. At the same time, one of the most common procedures performed in the OR uh, today, there's 30 million tracheal intubations performed annually in the U.S. for uh, surgery or critical illness. Involves taking laryngoscope, uh, displacing tissues, and placing an endotracheal tube for oxygenation and ventilation. Now, this is a race against the clock because the patient is not breathing on their own, and every second counts. The problem we're specifically trying to address is a problem of difficult tracheal intubation. That's either when you cannot see where you need to go, or you're having difficulty navigating and placing the endotracheal tube. So difficult tracheal intubations involve multiple attempts, change device techniques, or ch even changes in operators, and they almost always lead to some degree of patient harm. And one of the key predictors of success is being successful the first time, because every subsequent try, uh, the risk of major complications goes up 10x. And the current center of care, which is video laryngoscopy, leaves a lot to be desired in that area. And complications include anything from vocal cord damage all the way to brain damage and death. And that leads to lengthen hospital stays, ICU admissions, cancel surgeries, and lawsuits. Each difficult intubation currently costs in excess of $18,000. And that's actually not counting the cancel surgeries or the lawsuits. This is a huge multi-billion dollar economic cost. The patient makeup of this is about 6 million patients every year. And it can be broken down into patients where difficulty was encountered unexpectedly, as we see on the uh, left-hand side of the graph here. And that's about a million patients a year. And the much larger patient populations are in the OR. Uh, we call them special surgical patients. So these are patients that are morbidly obese, anybody with head and neck cancer, or any kind of cervical spine limitations. And then patients in the ED and ICU, uh, about 2.2 million uh, patients there that are difficult every year. And that's in the US alone. So our device for this is our handheld image-guided robot, uh, makes intubations predictable, safe, uh, with a near 100% first pass success and expected 90% reduction in complications. Uh, next is a short video of the robotic motion of our device. So it can robotically extend and articulate 360 degrees. And that articulation allows it to get anywhere it needs to go to in the airway. Next is a video of me intubating a difficult airway mannequin. Now, the device, the device is inserted just like you would insert a video laryngoscope. And if you have this view, as you see in the center here with the video laryngoscope, this would be considered difficult next to impossible uh, to intubate. With our device, using the joystick and buttons, you navigate the endoscope into the trachea, and then you, all you do is you take the uh, endotracheal tube, slide it over the scope, and the patient's intubated. All in 15 seconds, regardless of how difficult the patient is, it's always roughly the same time. Uh, in a future version, uh, we will do an AI version, and here's a demonstration of it in action in uh, a mannequin, and it works great in the mannequin. Uh, you, all you have to do is you press a button, the AI navigates the endoscope, the little target you see jumping around, that's the AI showing where it thinks it should go, and uh, it navigates the endoscope on its own. All that stuff to do is slide the endoscope, uh, so the endotracheal tube over the endoscope once again, and the patient's intubated. Now we've tested the joystick control version in over 50 cadavers with 100% first pass success, and that included significantly challenging cases, including sold airways, uh, no view, uh, every single time, 100% first time success. And we've been able to intubate quickly, easily in under a minute. 
And the AI mode, has, we've successfully evaluated in over 100 experience with clinicians and um, non-clinicians who are able to intubate our mannequin with ease. Our go to micro strategy is to launch our joystick controlled version first and then layer in AI smart guidance as we go along, uh, including the full control uh, in later uh, versions of the device. For patients with expected difficulty, we'll advocate the use of Spiro as a first line approach. And for patients where difficulty was encountered unexpectedly, uh, we'll advocate the use of Spiro after a direct laryngoscopy has failed. Plan is to start small, focus on anesthesiologists and intensivists in the ICU, and then branch out further to other markets. We plan to use uh, direct sales reps, start small, uh, you know, five reps in a single geography or key markets, and build from there as the sales model becomes more clear. The market is huge, the $6.3 million patients times $350 disposable, looking at $2.2 billion in disposables, and then uh, the robotic base at $15,000 adds another $200 million. The $350 additional procedural cost will yield more than $2,000 in cost savings per device used. And so the disposal will vary how it's paid for, but it will pay for itself. And we've tested this pricing on multiple conditions and hospital administrators, and the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, it'll be paid out of existing DRG and APC codes. In the ED and ICU, there's $150 add-on payment for devices of this nature. And the robotic base at $15,000 is low enough where they can be readily absorbed by facility and department budgets. Our regulatory pathway is clear. This is a class two device with a 510K pathway. The joystick control version as has been confirmed with the FDA will require no clinical data. Uh, and the AA guidance will require some further 510Ks in order to implement. We have seven patents uh, that are uh, granted in the US uh, and there's several more on the way as well as international filings. Out of the existing players in the space, nobody's anywhere close to offering what we're offering. And given our strong patent portfolio, I think they'll have a really hard time catching up. Our team's amazing. We have many exits, many years of experience launching medical devices, and we've launched tons of medical devices, uh, even as a team uh, combined. The exit opportunities for this are tremendous, and there's no shortage of acquirers uh, for this technology. And then uh, from a timeline perspective, we're gearing up to do our verification and validation testing right now. We have samples arriving actually next month to do our verification and our clinical build. Uh, we'll do our uh, FDA clearance in Q1. We'll get our FDA clearance in Q1 2025 uh, and then complete our uh, clinical study in Q2 2025 and uh, raise the Series A to complete a larger study. The first study will be about 30 patients. Uh, the follow-up study will be 100 patients comparing uh, 100 patients with our device comparing with 100 patients with video laryngoscopy, and we'll also do a commercial proof of concept uh, in the Series A, at which point we'll uh, raise the Series B. The clinician feedback on this has been uh, phenomenal. Everybody is really excited to get their hands on it, and that includes uh, 16 of our investors are anesthesiologists. Uh, they're really excited to get their hands on the device, and they've put their own personal funds into this. Thank you very much.